I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. The OM system OM1 Mark II is here. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. It is 2024 and the OM system OM1 Mark II is the latest professional grade Micro Four Thirds flagship camera on the market. Expectations are high and rightly so as its predecessor the Mark I single-handedly sparked a Micro Four Thirds hype and left its mark in camera history. The Mark II is also the first flagship Micro Four Thirds camera proudly bearing the name OM System, finally closing the chapter of Olympus as a camera brand and boldly heralding a new one with a story yet to be written. The OM1 Mark II is indeed a turning point and there is a lot to discover. From technical development to the roots of the camera's distinct design language, from a new autofocus operation philosophy to never seen before computational modes. I've examined every photography related aspect of the OM system OM1 Mark II in depth to answer the one and only question. Is this camera a worthy successor to the legendary OM1? After watching this review, you will know. A considerable time ago, OM System approached me and invited me to test a new flagship camera under the condition of absolute secrecy. This is the right moment to emphasize that the company did not compensate me in any way or form and that I'm not a brand ambassador. Quite the contrary. This extensive review you are about to watch was made possible solely by all channel members and supporters. I am deeply grateful to each and every one of you. Thanks a lot. The OM system team opened the initial briefing with a bold statement. They said, we know that the OM system OM1 was good. An outline of various technological achievements followed, many of which I covered on this channel and in various written publications in detail. What they said was definitely not an overstatement. After working with the OM system OM1 for more than a year professionally, I can confidently state that it is one of the best, if not the best camera I have ever used. It was therefore quite surprising to hear that only after about two years of the original's release, a new high-end camera was nearing the end of the design stage. My first thought was, is there even anything to improve given the currently available hardware in terms of sensor and processor? Well, it turned out there was. When OM system was developing a plethora of new features for the OM1, they hit a hardware brick wall named working memory. This is of course a bit of a simplification. But even with its state-of-the-art sensor and one of the fastest image processors on the market, the original OM1 could not handle the majority of the newly developed features reliably. As the OM system OM1 Mark I was reaching the end of its production run, I presume that the decision was made to address the one and only issue, the working memory, and keep everything else which was still as good as it gets. Again, I'm oversimplifying a bit as the hardware changes are way more than just a simple RAM upgrade, but you get the idea. The OM system OM1 Mark II is the culmination point of a camera design tradition which started with the first Olympus 4 thirds DSLR in 2001, the Olympus E1. Thanks to the back then new sensor format, Olympus was able to design a camera 
with unique ergonomic properties. Unlike in previous cameras, the viewfinder is located on the very left of the camera, while all major controls are placed on the right. The OM system OM1 Mark II echoes this concept not only in form but also in function. By mapping the menu button to the delete button, full one-handed control of the new camera is now possible. The successor to the E1 was the Olympus E3, a legendary camera in its own right, as it accompanied the Japanese astronaut Dr. Wakata on his mission aboard the International Space Station. One of the reasons why the E3 DSLR was well suited for being used in one of the most extreme environments man has ever explored was its superior grip design. With the OM1 series, this grip design has made its long-awaited comeback, but with one notable, very unfortunate exception. While the E3 styles are coated with industrial-grade rubber, which was expensive to manufacture, the OM1 styles are made out of hard plastic, making them significantly less tactile, especially when wearing gloves. Now with the release of the OM1 Mark II, the rubber dials are finally back, providing the full experience the E3 series was so well known for. Design-wise, the OM1 Mark II is indeed the perfect amalgamation of the E1 and the E3. But there is more. After having used the Mark II extensively side by side with my Mark I, I can confidently state that the build quality of what was already one of the most durable cameras money could buy was improved in all the right places. The buttons are now made out of a slightly different plastic, subtly increasing tactility. And there is another refinement which demanding photographers will most likely appreciate. Take a look. So this is my battered and bruised OM system OM1 Mark I. And when we turn the camera around and examine the OK button, we can clearly see that the button labeling on the OK button is coming off. So here is a quick demo. I'm going to speed the process up a little bit with my hobby knife right here. Let's scratch the surface a bit. And as you can see, the white labeling is coming off. Now let's compare this to the OM1 Mark II. I hope OM system is not watching this part of the video. Here is my knife. And let's do the same thing. Yeah, you can see the surface is virtually unchanged. I'd say that's a clear win for the Mark II right here. It is also important to know that thanks to an unchanged chassis, all accessories like the HLD10 power battery grip designed for the OM1 Mark I are still fully compatible. The OM system OM1 Mark II uses a state-of-the-art backside illuminated quad pixel Bayer pattern stacked CMOS sensor with an effective resolution of 20 megapixels. Allow me to digress for a second. It looks like the Mark II is using the same sensor as the Mark I. In my lab tests, both performed almost identically. However, there are some clues that OM system might have altered certain parts of the ADC architecture and or the processing algorithms. After getting back to them, unfortunately, they stated that they cannot disclose such design details at this point. I took note that they neither confirmed nor denied my statements. In any case, what is sure at this point is that the sensor has some quite remarkable properties. Before I explore those in detail, I'd like to emphasize that sensor design is always a balancing act. For example, you can either go for a very fast readout speed or even a global shutter, 
but that might impact dynamic range. Increasing the number of photo sites gives you better resolution, but is detrimental to noise performance and other metrics. Bottom line, there is no free lunch, although internet hype and marketing sometimes foster this notion. So let's take a look at the design choices made by OM system and what they mean for us photographers and videographers. Being a backside illuminated sensor, the necessary wiring for the sensor is placed beneath the substrate, resulting in high quantum efficiency, which in turn positively impacts the OM-1 Mark II's noise performance. The graph you see right now depicts the contrast to noise ratio at a given ISO setting. The y-axis with the dimensionless CNR values is logarithmic. Contrast to noise ratio is a useful metric to determine the noise performance of an imaging system. The higher the value, the better. What you can see here is that up to an ISO setting of 51,200, the CNR drops relatively slowly. In real life, this means that doubling the sensitivity setting on the OM-1 Mark II does not result in an image which is twice as noisy. Instead, the decrease of CNR in the mid-tone range is only about 30% for each stop of sensitivity increase. Well, actually, it is even better than that, as the higher the ISO, the less reduction of CNR from step to step. Take a look at the purple line, which models a 30% decrease from step to step. Note that ISO 102400 is an exception, as at this setting the image completely falls apart in terms of image noise, at least in single capture mode. Of course, the amount of image noise one finds acceptable is subjective, but I'm confident to state that up to at least ISO 6400, the OM-1 Mark II should satisfy the needs of even very critical photographers. With the Mark I, which exhibits very similar noise performance, I shot commercial assignments at ISO sensitivities of up to 25,600 and no one ever complained. Overall, the noise is predominantly monochromatic and the noise pattern is very organic, almost like film grain. So definitely, low light is not an issue with an OM-1 series camera, be it the Mark 1 or 2. Let's examine the dynamic range next. When utilizing the regular 12-bit capture, the OM-1 Mark II is able to discern at least 11 stops at ISO 200. Of course, not all of these 11 stops are of high fidelity, but it is a noteworthy achievement nonetheless. In practice, I like to keep all important parts of an image in the plus 3.5 to minus 5 EV range, but again, there is more dynamic range in the RAW file. All in all, what I really like about the sensor is that it strikes what is, in my opinion, the perfect balance between image quality, namely resolution, dynamic range and noise, and the fourth key factor, speed which is enabled by the sensor's stacked architecture. The fastest sensor readout time for image capture is about 1 120th of a second. This is in line with top-of-the-line cinema cameras. Such a fast readout time eliminates common rolling shutter issues, but is not so fast that it would negatively impact image quality. On top of that, the sensor has various readout modes, some of those readout modes are chosen automatically by the camera, depending on drive mode and ISO setting. But there is also the possibility of user intervention. For example, by setting the option low ISO processing to detail priority, continuous drive speeds drop slightly, but fine detail capture is improved, even in the RAW file.
regarding autofocus data readout from the sensor, the OM1 Mark II is able to do that 120 times per second or faster. This is a key factor for AF performance. Another design feature which contributes both to the AF performance and image quality is the quad pixel architecture. It combines the image quality of a contrast detection only sensor with the AF performance of a face detection enabled sensor. Let me elaborate. Classic on sensor face detection autofocus systems require half masked pixels to create offset images which the camera can use to calculate the subject's distance. This method is used by most manufacturers, for example Sony and Fujifilm. However, masking pixels negatively impacts image quality, which is, by the way, one of the reasons my Panasonic and Leica decided against it in the past, making contrast detection only systems necessary. Now back to the OM-1 Mark II. As I've hinted at, the camera is capable of a radically different approach thanks to its quad pixel sensor. Under each micro lens, there is either a red, green or blue color filter followed by four sub pixels each. This theoretically allows the camera to perform cross type face detection calculations anywhere in the frame as every pixel can deliver the necessary data. In practice, there are more or less fixed AF points you can select, but more on that later. Additionally, the measuring base, which is a crucial factor for phase detection accuracy and speed, could theoretically be adapted flexibly, depending on lens and subject distance. It would even be possible to completely alter the AF configuration via a firmware update. Unfortunately, how the AF works in detail and whether this option is utilized or not is a well-kept company secret at this point. What is not a secret, however, is that the sensor technology in the OM-1 Mark II is state-of-the-art in every respect. The OM-1 Mark II delivers what can be described as groundbreaking AF performance. With the right lens and a bit of practice, the camera is as good as infallible. 1053 user-selectable hybrid phase and contrast detection all cross-type AF points cover the frame from edge to edge. Nothing is out of reach. Focus and recompose soon becomes a distant memory. To the layman, the AF system of the Mark II appears to be very similar to that of the Mark I. However, the expert will immediately notice that the system was reworked from the ground up to increase AF accuracy, improve user friendliness and expand the overall AF capabilities. The OM-1 Mark I was already very accurate and reliable but the OM-1 Mark II cranks that up to 11. Especially continuous autofocus accuracy with telephoto lenses at distances over 100 meters is now noticeably better. Casual users might not need this level of performance, but demanding photographers pushing their equipment to its limits will. Thanks to the AF system overhaul, a new, vastly simplified autofocus control concept was made possible. To truly appreciate the advancements, we need a reference camera, the OM-1 Mark I for example. The Mark I offers three standard AF modes, SAF, CAF and CAF plus tracking. SAF and CAF can be combined with one of four face detection algorithms. Additionally, SAF and CAF also work with five subject detection modes. However, when CAF plus tracking is selected, things are different. Depending on whether this mode is combined with one of the four face detection modes or one of the five subject detection modes, the camera behaves slightly differently. Oh, and there are still these modes, which do not even fit on this diagram. 
As you can see, things were a bit complicated. But as users of other camera brands know, what we just saw is by far not the most complex AF system currently on the market. Anyway, let's take a look at the beautiful simplicity of the Mark II. You can either select SAF or CAF. The first is for still subjects, the latter for moving subjects. If needed, SAF and CAF can be combined with one of the reworked six subject detection modes. If you want to track a moving subject not included in one of the categories on the left, pick CAF plus tracking. In this mode, the Mark II is able to follow a subject based on color, shape and movement. For special applications, you have regular manual focus, pre-manual focus and starry sky AF. The latter is a proprietary OM system AF algorithm for photographing celestial bodies. Done. That's it. It really is that simple. This AF concept definitely sets a new standard in terms of user friendliness and practicability. As Leonardo da Vinci once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Two remarks for veteran OM system users. The changes to the AF system effectively deconflict CAF plus tracking and subject detection, which was a source of confusion for many. Also, the legacy face priority modes are gone for good and replaced with the much better machine learning based human subject detection mode. So welcome to the studio. I'm here with the brand new OM system OM1 Mark II. And what I want to show you is how good the human detection mode actually is. In fact, it is so good that I just set it for most model shoots and leave it like that. The camera is accurately tracking the face, the eye or even the body should the model turn around. And for this little demonstration, I've got a worldwide traveling model coming in in a minute. Just gonna explain the setup really quick. On the right hand side or on the left hand side from your perspective is a GBM SD300B Pro with a big octa box and a grid. And I'm gonna illuminate the background with another GBM SD300B Pro. So it's gonna be continuous lighting, which is great for the sake of demonstrating the AF capabilities to you in a second. Additionally, I'm gonna shoot with a relatively wide aperture, which makes it harder for the camera to accurately acquire focus, especially at longer distances. Yes, this is a problem in the studio as well, regardless of camera type, studio photographers know, but it's not a problem with the OM system OM-1 Mark II, as you will see in a minute. I've got to prepare some stuff and yeah, can't wait to get behind the camera. Yeah, you wanna put that dish in your mouth. Even when the head of the subject is relatively small in the frame, the Mark II reliably detects the eye. A strand of hair over the said eye, no problem, it picks the best focus point. The person turns around, well, that does not confuse the Mark II. For me, as a professional fashion and reportage photographer, this is a revelation. Unlike previously implemented subject recognition systems, the one in the Mark II 
is able to memorize and track a selected subject. Even when new subjects enter the frame, the camera won't get distracted. Take a look. Selecting a subject is very straightforward. It works almost intuitively, either via the AF target area or by pressing a dedicated function button. Backlit situations are always tough for any camera. The OM-1 Mark II, however, is very robust in that regard. Here is a quick demonstration. The LED panel in the back is so strong that it even causes lens flares. Nonetheless, the OM-1 Mark II focuses effortlessly. All in all, the AF system of the OM-1 Mark II is the new benchmark in terms of reliability and practicability. The only way to truly appreciate it is to experience it in practice. Later in the video, I will demonstrate the camera's formidable fast action performance, but first, let me cover two other aspects critical for sports and wildlife, so you have all the necessary information to properly interpret what you are about to see. So let's talk about the shutter system and sequential shooting next. The OM-1 Mark II comes equipped with two shutter systems, a high-speed mechanical shutter and a high-speed electronic shutter. The very durable shutter unit is rated for 400,000 actuations, so there is no reason for holding back. Personally, I'm very happy that the camera still has a physical shutter built in. It allows the Mark II to do a couple of things that would not be possible without one. Thanks to the mechanical shutter, the Mark II is able to perform a complete self-check of the image processing system, including automated pixel mapping, without sending the camera for servicing. Regardless of lighting, the fast transit time of the physical shutter curtains eliminates rolling shutter issues and allows for hassle-free flash synchronization up to 1 250th of a second. Most importantly, the physical shutter enables the OM-1 Mark II to perform in-camera dark frame subtraction, called noise reduction by OM system, to get rid of image noise before writing the RAW to the card. Last but not least, the mechanical shutter is essential for live composite shooting, a computational mode found only in OM system cameras. And let's not forget the pleasing sound of a mechanical shutter. Moving on to the electronic shutter and associated drive modes, there is a lot to talk about as well. Blackout free shooting with up to 50 frames per second is possible with full autofocus exposure and white balance metering. My test showed that the high frame rates do not have a detrimental effect on the AF hit rate. Thanks to the drastically increased working memory, the OM-1 Mark II is now able to maintain blackout free shooting down to frame rates of 12.5 frames per second. For my line of work, this is a big improvement, as I don't need 50 frames per second of a model walking down the runway. With the Mark I, I ended up deleting a lot of images later on. Now with the Mark II, this problem is rectified. With fixed settings, the OM-1 Mark II can capture 120 RAW images per second at full resolution. Of course, both 50 frames and 120 frames per second are available with the fully configurable Pro Capture modes, which store images in the buffer and only write them to the card once the shutter button is fully depressed. With this feature, missing the decisive moment is a thing of the past even if you are not Henri Cartier-Bresson. 
Last but not least, thanks to the fast readout time, even flash synchronization is possible with the electronic shutter. When it comes to sequential shooting in general, it is very important to underline the immense buffer depth. The buffer now holds up to 256 RAW files simultaneously when shooting 50 frames per second with full AF white balance and exposure metering. Take a look. While the buffer is being cleared, the OM system OM1 Mark II remains fully operational. You can change all settings, switch shooting modes and even playback and review the captured images. And of course you can capture new images. But enough talk, let me show you how well suited the OM1 Mark II is for action photography in practice. Hello and welcome to the second oldest harness racing track in Europe. It is the Wiener Trabrennbahn and it was opened in 1878. And today is race day, which is the perfect opportunity to test the capabilities of the OM1 Mark II when it comes to fast action and reportage photography. I'm standing here right at the beginning of the racetrack. All the other photographers didn't see it. They are down there and that is great. So I'm gonna get the best pictures here. The lens on my camera is the amazing 50 to 200 millimeter Suico 4 four thirds. So this is a DSLR lens, but it is fully compatible with the OM-1 Mark II, thanks to an adapter. And it's amazingly sharp. I'm gonna use sequential high mechanical shutter because I really love the click and also I'm gonna make it a bit harder for the Mark II to really stay on focus because of the short blackout sequence. It will be a bit harder for the camera to actually track the horses. Nonetheless, I'm convinced that the camera is gonna do a fantastic job, but we will see in a second. There we go, yes. The next race is about to start. A few words regarding autofocus performance of the OM-1 Mark II. To really get the best autofocus performance, you have to use a native micro four thirds lens. So the four thirds lens, the 50 to 200 is back in the camera bag and the 75 millimeter F1.8 it is. Because with this lens, I can go full blackout free sequential shooting. And that's a huge bonus, both for me as a photographer in regarding the framing, but also for the camera as the AF system can track the subject more reliably and well it's actually infallible in this mode. On a side note it's getting darker so I have to crank up the ISO but I don't worry about that at all. ISO 12800 I can comfortably do that with the OM1 Mark II. I was also able to get shots much higher with the predecessor so yeah that's not an issue at all. Enough talk gotta get ready. Yeah and there we go. Yeah. Yes. Did you see that? It is just amazing. Everything is in focus. This is just incredible. Wow. This is going to be a tight one. I can already see that. Yes, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. Unfortunately, I can't cash in anything because I put my money on the wrong horse. 
well, at least I didn't put it on the wrong horse with the OM1 Mark II, right? High resolution shot is a staple feature of high-end OM system cameras. But thanks to the improved image stabilizer and the significantly increased working memory, the OM1 Mark II offers by far the best iteration of this feature yet. Before I can elaborate on that, a few words on the general operating principle of the function. The OM1 Mark II has two high resolution shot modes, tripod and handheld. In tripod mode, the camera has to be on a stable platform. As soon as the shutter button is pressed, the camera uses its built-in high precision sensor stabilization to move the sensor in microscopic increments. The captured images are combined in camera and saved as a RAW file with 80 megapixels. In handheld mode, the OM1 Mark II utilizes frame-to-frame -frame micro variations and a specialized algorithm to create a composite photo with up to 50 megapixels. Contrary to its name, handheld mode can be used on a tripod as well, thanks to minuscule movements caused by the image stabilizer. As you can see, the image stabilization plays a key role for both modes. However, the improved stabilization mostly impacts handheld high-res shot, making it even more reliable. So what about the working memory then? Well, this is where things get really exciting, because it enables you to do something which was never possible before with any Olympus or OM system camera, capturing 14-bit image files with unprecedented fidelity. I decided to dissect the Mark II's high-res shot function in the lab to find out whether the spec sheet type is truly justified. Spoiler alert, what I found out is quite staggering. Up to now, OM system cameras recorded RAW files with a bit depth of 12 bits per channel. Theoretically, this allows for storing 12 stops of a linearly encoded dynamic range. In practice, the usable dynamic range is always limited by image noise, so these 12 stops were plenty, and more would have been a waste of storage space with no practical benefit. In high-res shot mode, however, the OM system OM1 Mark II is able to capture more than 12 stops of dynamic range with very little image noise. That is why the OM system engineering team increased the raw bit depth to 14 bits, which allows linear encoding of up to 14 stops of dynamic range. Various tests showed that at least 13.3 stops of dynamic range are captured and encoded in the 14-bit RAW file. A practical demonstration. I've projected a gradient on my studio wall and placed the brightest part on the left-hand side at an exposure value of minus 5 EV. The captured RAW data was brightened extensively and a strong median filter was applied to visualize both the gradation and the dynamic range. The 12-bit standard capture at ISO 200 shows that the camera is able to record a signal above the noise floor down to about minus 8 dB. In even darker areas, the visualization method I used shows a signal above the noise floor, but this should be ignored for all practical purposes, as it is mostly averaged image noise. Moving on to the 12-bit high-res capture at ISO 200, two things become apparent. First. The removal of image noise leads to an improved gradation across the whole tonal range. Second, the bit depth is not sufficient to properly encode the lower tonal values. The OM system OM1 Mark II is quite literally running out of storage space. Analyzing the 14-bit high-res capture at ISO 200, things are very different. With the same processing settings, the tonal values are brighter in the 8-bit image that you see on your screen right now. This already indicates the expanded dynamic range, but it is important to note that this is primarily a result of the transfer function used in the raw conversion process. 
Instead, we should focus on the much finer gradation in the lower tone values compared to the previous two images to truly see the advantage of the 14-bit capture. There is even more tonal information further down the scale, which is not visible due to the framing of the test scene. After various additional tests, I can confidently state that the OM1 Mark II is indeed capable of capturing high-resolution image files with 14 bits per channel, with high bit precision. In other words, the amount of detectable tonal information is quadrupled from 4096 to 16384 values per channel, especially when extensively brightening image information in the shadows, like I did in the previous test, this can be a veritable game changer. Then, less interpolation from each EV step to the next one is required, resulting in incredible image fidelity. Take a look. This test scene was underexposed by three stops. Three images were recorded. One regular image, one with handheld high-res shot 12-bit and one with handheld high-res shot 14-bit. In what is now the mid-tone range after brightening, the gradation in the 12-bit high-res file is better. Image noise is drastically reduced. In the 14-bit version, the gradation is even more nuanced and the colors are significantly more accurate. Examining the shadow areas, which were drastically underexposed initially, we can see prominent noise in the regular image. In the 12-bit image, there is what looks like slight posterization, as the camera was not able to fully store the captured information and as there is no image noise present to conceal this deficiency. With 14 bits of data, however, even the finest tonal nuances in the shadows were recorded properly and could be developed in post-production for you to see on the screen. Personally, I was always a bit cautious when estimating the increase in effective resolving power by high-resolution shot. So I decided to put an end to all guesstimates and gather some accurate data. And believe me, it was the right thing to do as my gut feeling was completely wrong. By photographing a high-precision slanted edge target, I was able to calculate the modulation transfer function for each mode and compare the results. This is an objective method for precisely evaluating resolving power. Are you ready for the results? Well, a theoretical consideration beforehand. Doubling the pixel resolution should ideally lead to double the amount of resolved information. This means that high-res shot tripod should increase the resolving power of the OM1 Mark II to 200.4% and high-res shot handheld to 157.4%. The skeptic in me said that those values won't be reached in practice as resolving power of the lens and variations in the composite process would prohibit that. I was somewhat right, as indeed the OM1 Mark II does not reach the calculated expected resolving power, but surpasses it. In practice, using proprietary OM system processing algorithms, high-res shot handheld improves the effective resolving power of the OM1 Mark II to 158.8% which is 1.4% higher than the expected improvement. High-res shot tripod improves the effective resolving power to a staggering 214.2%, which is almost 14% higher than the expected value. This means that with a high-end Micro Four Thirds lens, the OM system OM1 Mark II is able to increase the effective resolution in both high-res shot modes to a higher degree than the combination of the resolving power of the lens at 20 megapixels and the increase in pixel resolution would suggest, delivering images which are in the same league as images captured by a camera with a native resolution of either 50 megapixel or 80 megapixels, regardless of sensor size. So how is that possible? Thanks to capturing a sufficient number of frames with high precision, the capability to store every nuance of the sensor data in the bigger buffer and by using advanced processing algorithms, the high-res shot modes average out resolution-limiting factors like image noise 
and the effect of the Bayer color filter array. The result is incredible resolving power, which just requires the push of a button. On top of that, and unbeknownst to many, OM system provides a method to effectively encode the increased resolution in files with lower pixel resolution. What does this mean exactly? This means that when converting a high resolution RAW file to a JPEG of lower resolution using the OM1 Mark II's processing engine, the resolution is compressed until it almost reaches the Nyquist limit dictated by the pixel resolution of the output file making effective use of almost every single pixel in the file, delivering 25 or 50 megapixel images of unprecedented sharpness and clarity. Based on my calculations, with a shutter speed of at least 1 125th of a second, the capture sequence in tripod mode would take the OM-1 Mark II at least 1 15th of a second and 1 10th of a second in handheld mode. Further decreasing the shutter speed would have no effect as the sensor readout time becomes the limiting factor. Measurements in practice indicate, however, that the camera needs slightly more time to capture everything in both modes. The fastest capture in tripod mode takes on average a few milliseconds less than one fourth of a second. Handheld mode is slightly faster, almost exactly one fifth of a second, although the camera is capturing more frames. Why is that? Well, the sensor movement and the pause time after every sensor movement, intended to eliminate micro vibrations, take the OM-1 Mark II about 2 milliseconds for each frame after the first one when in tripod mode. Examining the processing time, things are the other way around. Tripod mode is a bit faster and needs only 4.7 seconds on average for the composite process, regardless of the selected bit depth. Handheld mode requires a different, more complicated algorithm and the processing of more images. It therefore takes a bit longer, with 5.75 seconds on average with a bit depth of 12 bits and 7 seconds on average with a bit depth of 14 bits selected. The image quality benefits of high res shot are impressive. 14 bits per channel, up to 80 megapixels resolution and all of that with very little image noise, excellent color fidelity and high bit precision. But what about the usability in practice? Well, there is a reason why by default OM system mapped the high res mode to the easily accessible record button on top of the camera. Because it works so well for a wide variety of shooting situations. The rule of thumb is that everything what can be captured with a shutter speed of 1 15th of a second is a potential high-res shot candidate. Tripod high-res shot is excellent for landscape photography, product photography, scientific applications, as well as reproduction photography, including digitization of film. As film stores a large tonal range, relatively compressed in finely nuanced details, the increased bit depth is very beneficial for this application, making the OM-1 Mark II a veritable film scanner. For photographing living subjects, handheld high-res shot works reliably, as long as a fast enough shutter speed of at least 1 125th of a second is used, as the OM-1 Mark II always records a backup non-composite regular resolution image in both high-res modes, there is no potential downside to them. On the mode dial of the OM-1 Mark II is a dedicated B for bulb mode settings. But as veteran OM system photographers know, an OM system camera not just has a bulb mode, but the bulb and time exposure mode plus a selection of proprietary computational modes. There is Live Bulb and Lifetime, both of which allow you to see the exposure develop in real time, so you can end it precisely at the right moment. Then there is also Live Composite, which records a base exposure and only overlays brightness changes in the frame, opening up a myriad of creative possibilities. For example, photographing star trails, 
with an object in the foreground is now possible with a single frame. And in real estate photography, for example, lighting accents can be placed in the scene in completely new ways. Personally, I'm rarely capturing macro photos. Be that as it may, it is important to underline that the OM-1 Mark II is without a doubt one of the best cameras on the market for this genre of photography. Up to now, the OM-1 Mark I was the king of the hill, but my tests clearly showed that the Mark II outperforms its predecessor. Thanks to the improved image stabilizer, the Mark II not only gives you these extra 20% of shake reduction, but also makes handheld high-res shot in macro situations much more reliable. Also, the focus stacking algorithm was reworked. With compatible lenses like the formidable M Suiko Holy Trinity of macro lenses, the 30, the 60 and the 90, the OM-1 Mark II can stack up to 15 images internally. Even when I deliberately moved the camera during the capture, it was able to successfully create a composite. Truly impressive. Of course, focus stacking is also a convenient feature for landscape photography. Setting a wider aperture to avoid diffraction effects and getting the desired depth of field with focus stacking is a viable technique. A camera in the 21st century is not an isolated device, but part of a digital working environment. Seamless integration is not an option, but a necessity to facilitate an efficient workflow. The OM system OM-1 Mark II offers everything one might need for that. With the stable smartphone app OiShare available for Android and Apple, the camera can be controlled remotely and even transfer of raw images to the smartphone is a breeze. The app also comes with useful editing features. Then there is OM Capture, the free of charge professional grade tethering software, which gives you ultimate control over the camera via a wireless or wired connection. For example, you can even move the AF motor in user-defined increments. For me personally, the best thing since sliced bread when it comes to connectivity is that with OM Workspace, I can transfer all images with an easy to set up direct wireless connection to my workstation. Removing and reinserting SD cards is a thing of the past. Last but not least, the OM-1 Mark II is a UVC and UAC enabled device, making it a plug and play external camera for streaming. How does the OM-1 Mark II feel in practice? Two words, capable but complex. The Mark II is a professional tool for the demanding photographer and although it is pretty easy to get started with this camera, there are a lot of things to learn to truly master it, especially if you have not used the OM-1 Mark I before or watched any of my expert guides here on YouTube. To me, it is not just the raw performance of the camera, which makes it such a great tool, it is its completeness. Let me just list a few things I did not even mention up to now. It has an excellent sensor cleaning system, the supersonic wave filter, two fast UHS-2 card slots, USB-C power delivery, and an excellent latency-free 5.76 million dots electronic viewfinder. Talking about battery life, although the Mark II needs more power than its predecessor, you can still get away with two batteries for a regular reportage assignment. The rating per battery is, by the way, 500 images per charge. Although I said it's a complex camera, it is not a complicated camera, which is something completely different. Quite the contrary, the menus are well structured and easy to understand. There are more than enough function buttons on the body, all of which are user configurable. Also, 
let me address a few aspects of the OM1 Mark II which are often overlooked but essential in practice. For example, auto white balance just works and the flash system is easily one of the best on the market if you know how to use it. The available exposure metering modes are also very intuitive and versatile. A small annoyance for me personally is the current implementation of the one touch white balance function. I have to cover the full frame with the white balance target to get a proper reflective white balance reading. I wish there was a smaller metering area selectable, but that's about the only thing. Be that as it may, I'd like to mention that OM System is one of the last few manufacturers who still provides the service infrastructure for professional users. OM Pro Service is available in many countries and ensures fast turnaround times should you really need a repair. The availability of a 5-year extended warranty for the Mark II is also a nice bonus and a testament that this is not a throwaway product. While working on this review, I realized how special the OM1 Mark II really is as a photographic tool. From landscape to macro to fast action to fashion to scientific applications, there is truly nothing the OM1 Mark II cannot do. If this camera does not get the job done, the culprit is found behind the viewfinder. Let's not forget that with the right lens, the OM1 Mark II is small enough for street and travel photography, but with the battery grip and the high-end lens, it is immediately transformed into a professional's tool. As you've noticed, I did not even mention the camera's video capabilities. Until I publish a separate piece on those, let me just mention a few key aspects for the sake of giving you the complete picture. 444 Cinema 4K ProRes RAW External, 10-bit Cinema 4K H.265 Internal, 240p Full HD Video and the perfect trifecta of picture profiles to top it all off. Flat OM Log 400 and HLG. In a nutshell, everything you need for high-end video. Do you need an OM1 Mark II to create amazing work? No. But if you want ultimate portability and condensed photographic performance for all genres, as well as a refined user experience, you know where to look. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.